think a, it's a myth that every nobody did anything except study and go to the library. That it, it, first of all, anybody, any student at that time would have uh, denied that. But in retrospect, I think there's a lot of looking back and thinking that all students did was study, uh, that there weren't, wasn't anything to do. Uh, we have the Where Fun Goes to Die t-shirt, which implies that there never wasn't any fun. That isn't true. There was fun. There were a lot of things. But with a college population in the mid-2000s, to have a fun activity, to have a student group, you have to have people who want it. Now, at the, even in those years, there were, there were uh, plenty of student activities. We had student activities night, and students were signing up for more than they could possibly fit into their quarterly schedules, but they signed up. And so as the college grew to over 3,000, you began then to, it was easier to find another group of half a dozen or 10 or 15 who wanted to do an X or a Y. And so then you formed an RSO and, and uh, you had a group. Um, so I would say the biggest significance was, was numbers. Um, now there's even more. And, and that's even better. But uh, I think it, it, it's, um, you have to have a critical mass if you're going to have a group of people who are interested in, um, well, making a documentary film or in improv, improv theater. Um, you, you need numbers. So I think that's the significance. Now, why do, why do we now have numbers? Why did we start having bigger numbers in, in uh, the 70s and 80s? Well, money <laughs> and uh, financial aid and uh, better marketing of, the, of Chicago. And we had to do more so that the admissions staff would travel more and go to more places. Uh, and we would go to college fairs. We had the Student Schools Committee where members of our current student body would, when they were home for Thanksgiving or home over Christmas, uh, would go to, back to their high schools and talk to kids who were one and two years only behind them and talk about Chicago. So Student Schools Committee made a big part of getting the word out. Um, Sample classes. We went and we, I went and did sample classes. I couldn't. I could rattle off Houston and Dallas and uh, New Orleans was one trip, uh, and then another one was several places in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. A lot of us did that, and and sort of the first half was really truly a model class for my, in my case a biology. Uh, common core kind of thing. And then I would talk about how the class continued for the rest of the quarter. And then I would talk about how that class and others would fit in. And then I'd talk about how students had a choice. I think there became a beginning of a worry that, that it was a rigid curriculum and everybody had to take the same things. And that was true in the 40s in the Hutchins College where you did Humanities 1, Humanities 2, and Humanities 3. That was that. So I think we had one of the myths about this place was that it was a rigid curriculum. So we had to dispel that. So I would say it was outreach of a variety of kinds that got more people here uh, and financial aid and uh, efforts by our current students and faculty to go out and talk. Uh, a, a lot of things brought the population up.